Good morning, guys, and welcome back to our off-grid cabin build video series whew, here on our homestead in North Idaho. We're going to continue installing the solar panels that we started in the previous video. If you missed the previous video, there is a card right up there that you would probably like to check out first. But let's continue on. We're going to start off by unboxing our charge controller. So this is a 60 amp Renogy charge controller, the Rover line. Let's bust it open here, see what's inside. So we've got the book, of course, right? The manual on how to use it. Lots of information in here. And then we've got some mounting hardware. We've got a uh, temperature sensor here that plugs into the unit. And let's see, what do we got? This is kind of the, the meat and potatoes of it. Whoa, man, that thing's heavy. Looks like it, yep. That's it. That's all that's in the box. All right, so here is our, wow, charge controller. Sweet. Look at that bad boy. Isn't that cool? All right, so charge controller, cooling fins on the back. You've got your information right here. There are a lot of different charge controllers out there that can do 60 amps. Some are a lot cheaper than the Renogy. Some are way more expensive and have more capabilities. So why did we go with the Renogy? Well, for one, it's a fairly reputable company, right? I mean, they don't make the top, top end stuff, but it is an American company. I'm not saying this is made in America. It's probably made in China. Hmm, doesn't say where it's made. I'm sure it's China though, guys. Probably the same factory as a lot of other charge controllers. But we already have one of these. We have their 40 amp version as well. And so we're going to have to run two charge controllers in parallel to charge our batteries just because of how many solar panels we've got right we're running a 24 volt system and so our four new panels this will be just enough to handle those four panels first thing we're going to do here is open this guy up so we can get to the connections and also i just want to see what it looks like in there but guys like normal right uh, i'll go ahead and put links to all this stuff so you can go ahead and check it out read reviews about it and uh, see if it's something that you might want to use yourself. Perfect, right? Super, super simple. The screws will fall out, so be careful of that. All right, so what do we have got here? And we've got a bunch of different connectors up here. Um, the ones that we're going to be concerned with is the battery temperature sensor right here. And also for the Bluetooth. We're going to connect the Bluetooth module up to this one instead of the other one. And that way we can just try it out on this one. Cool. So these are all of our connectors here. Mounting hardware, it said we've got. Where's our mounting hardware? Yeah, right here. It's cool. Let's check this stuff out. How's this work? I think this will make it easier to mount to the wall. Right? Yeah, be like that. That's cool. That'll make it easier to get a drill bit in there and uh, mount this guy to the wall. You could use these, of course, right here and right here. We've got these. I'm going to use them. And that way I don't lose them, too. Too easy to lose stuff when you just keep all these little tiny spare parts hanging around. Beautiful. All right, so there we go. We've got some mounting brackets there that are kind of a little bit easier to get to. I can't wait to get this thing hooked up today. We've got a cloudy day. It's been snowing all morning. It finally stopped. And uh, we'll see what we can produce right now. Fortunately, before we can hook that guy up, we got to shovel off the path. Let's take a quick second and see how much water we've got in here and also see whether or not it's frozen being covered with so much snow. I don't really want to take all the snow off because I think it looks really cool. Plus, I'm betting that it keeps it insulated. All right, come on over and check it out. Let's see. We'll look together for the first time in a long time. Finish. Get all that ice off of there. Ready? Ooh, what do we see in there? Huh? Hey, right, there we go. Now you can see the bottom of it down there. Hmm, I'm guessing, I don't know, 800 gallons or so? Somewhere in there? Super thin layer of ice, man. That is cool, guys, because it has been freezing cold here. But I'm sure it's that snow insulating it from the really cold temperatures. Of course, the bottom of it's going to be like 40 degrees or so ground temperature, right? Because it is about three feet underground. 
So yeah, it's doing really good. Before we get that guy mounted on the wall, let me show you this. This is the setup that we have right now. This is a Renergy Rover, right? Just like the new one, but this one is a 40 amp model. And then this is our inverter right here, 24 volt Ames inverter. And our batteries right here, four 200 amp hour, six volt batteries. Right now we're making about 60 volts and 1.73 amps. Not much, right? Not much, but it is something. It's charging the batteries. There's the sun. It's right up in there. There's no sun. It's been snowing all morning, but we've been charging our batteries. They've been steadily getting fuller and fuller and fuller after we depleted them last night. Didn't deplete them all the way. But, you know, ran them down a little bit. Now they're charging back up. All right, so I'm hoping that it's gonna fit right here. Yeah, why don't we put it like, like right there, huh? I think that'd be a good spot. I think that'll work. Wow, let's see if we can do this. One-handed with a Phillips screw. Eh. You guys know I don't like Phillips screws. But, let's see. Okay, we got it. Beautiful. All right, there we go, she's mounted. Nice and sturdy. Yeah, nice and sturdy. So when you're hooking these things up, you wanna hook them up to the batteries first, not to the solar panels first. So we're gonna to have to make some cables, uh, get that done so that we can hook them up to the batteries. So we're gonna to have to make some new cables just like these to go to the new charge controller, which means we're gonna disconnect these and cut these shorter because, check it out, Oh, I ordered a ton of that stuff. Knowing that we were going to expand this system later, so I just left them long. Now we're gonna cut them off and uh, put some new terminals on, make some new cables. First things first, let's go ahead and disconnect these bad boys. I forget if you're supposed to do positive first or negative first. Hmm, I don't remember. You do what you're supposed to do. Let's go ahead and put this guy back on there. Tighten it back down. It's so crowded in here now. Winter's here, and so we got to store like everything in here. And man, we definitely need to build a shop or a garage or something. So we disconnect this bad boy here. Look at that, no corroding on these batteries or nothing. They look clean. Okay, all right. You don't want to over tighten those things, but get them good and snug. All right, so we've got our cables disconnected. Now we need to unhook them from the charge controller after I wiggle back out of here. So one of the differences between these two, you notice, these ones are exposed. Those ones have a cover on it. Guess that makes it fancier. All right, look at that, bam, baby. All right, we cut our length of cable off right here for the new charge controller which still leaves us a ton of cable left over, which will hook back up to the old charge controller. We gotta put some ends on here though. I'll show you how to do that right now. But first of all, let me show you what we got here. We have got our crimping tool. We've got our connectors right here. And we've got our cable. We just need to strip a little bit off of there. So just be careful because this wire right here, I'll put a link to this cable we got too. We got a good deal of it, good deal on it. Uh, these are really small, so it's flexible, right? It's awesome, it's really flexible. But that means that these each strand in here is small. And so that means that you can cut them really easy. So you gotta be careful. So basically you put this guy in there, put this in there, and that goes down on it just like that. Right like that. It would be good if we had a stump to work on, but all the stumps are covered in like three feet of snow. So we'll do it right here, right here on the edge. Then you're just gonna beat it with the hammer. Bam! There we go. Open that guy up, I mean, check it out, right? That's what it looks like right there. It's on there. Now some people are gonna say that you need to solder these. You don't need to solder them, you can if you want to. Some people are going to insist that you have to solder them. Mm, that's their opinion, right? You don't have to. Would it be a better connection? Or would it be a better connection if you soldered them? Mm, 
Probably. Is it really going to make a difference? Mm, probably not. Especially if you're not in a wet environment or you're not in some environment where they're going to corrode in there. So anyway, I'm not soldering them. You do what you want. Twist it in there. Make sure it's on good. I like to twist it because the end here is kind of tapered. When you twist it, it'll go in all the way, nice and far. And also, oh, twist that wire up tight. All right, so we put this in here. Bam, just like we did before. Make sure the cable's in all the way. Oh, let me show you this here. You got this little flange right here. Can you see that? Yeah, that little flange. So basically, you put it in here, and you slide it up to that flange where it, can, where it hooks. Right? I don't know. You can't barely see that. But anyway, when you put it in there, you'll see that flange kind of fits in a groove. That's basically what you do. And you know it's in where it's supposed to be. Okay. Let's beat it. Whoa, boy. If you were doing this on a really solid surface, it wouldn't bounce like that for one. And you'd be able to hear when it was all the way done. You might hit it once, twice, three times, but you'll hear a definite sound will change when you hit it. And you know that you've got it all the way, all the way crimped. Here we go. Tighten her up a little bit. Not a little bit. We're going to tighten her up a lot. Just want to tighten her up and then loosen it up and take it out and just make sure that we didn't get the insulation. Yeah, good. We didn't. Okay, so we put it in all the way. We pull it out just a little bit. Battery negative. Just double checking. Huh. That's interesting. Look at this. We've got battery negative, battery positive, and those things are separated here. I was going to put this on load negative. That ain't good. I don't want to do that. Battery negative, battery positive over here. Okay. Nice and snug. Nice and snug. All right. Got our temperature sensor here. So we'll go ahead and hook up the temperature sensor to it. Yep. That's it. Can't go in backwards, can it? Nope, it's got to go this way. All right, temperature sensor is in. Just brought this outside from inside, so it's going to be off at first probably till it cools off. Got these cables hooked up, temperature sensor hooked up, got it re-hooked up back to here. And I forgot to tell you that before you disconnect power to your charge controller, you want to make sure to disconnect the solar from it which is what we did. It doesn't look like we disconnected it here, but in fact, what we did is we came out here and we unplugged the ends that go to the solar panels. So there's no power coming into it um, without being hooked up to the batteries. So what we're gonna do is hook both of these guys up to the batteries, and then we're going to move. Now let's do that first. All right, so we wanna go ahead and move. These are our new solar panels. We wanna go ahead and move them over to our new charge controller because it is the 60 amp one which on a bright sunny day with full solar making capabilities that's what we want we want it on the new one all right so i put tape on the positive end that way i never get it confused i like to put red on there but i ran out of red so we're, we'll put white on there this time okay let's just see here right about there just go ahead and back it out like we did before just to make sure where we're connecting. Oh yeah, that's good. Perfecto. Snug, but not too tight, right? All right, we are ready now to hook these guys up to the batteries. Well, again, guys, I forget which one you're supposed to do first. So we're gonna go ahead and do the negative first this time. Since we did the positive first last time, don't want anybody to feel left out. I'm sure somebody in the comments can tell us which one you're supposed to do first. So go ahead and let us know. Now for the positive, just double check up here. Before we do this, just want to double check. Red is going to positive. Black is going to battery negative. Black is going to battery negative. Red's going to battery positive, right? So we're good. Might get a little spark. So if we do, we might jump and scream. Oh yeah, a little baby spark so cute so cute click snap together this one goes to this one is there snow in there all right so this one goes into this one man this is hard to do with one hand come on buddy come on 
<laughs> there we go. Clip together. Yep, look at that, right there, good. All right, we should be making electricity, not a lot, but we should be making some off of the new panels. New panels right here, 65. That's good, making 43 watts it says. 1.7 amps, no load. Perfect guys. Let's go ahead, let's go ahead and transfer our Bluetooth, which is this cable right here. Transfer our Bluetooth over to this one right here. Okay, Bluetooth's hooked up. Now let's see, how's the Bluetooth working? All right, there we go, guys. The Bluetooth seems to be working good here. Let's see um, the settings, go into the settings here, right, and then you can set up your system voltage. So I set mine to 24, uh, battery amp hours, and with the battery type. And then if you look down here, these settings down here are kind of set by the factory, but they're doubled for a 24 volt system. So that's how that works. Well, we've got all the solar panels hooked up now. Notice that we actually used these connectors here for the new panels, which is different than what I said in the previous video. And we used the ones that I said we were gonna use on the new panels for the old panels right here. But everything is hooked up, everything is working. Unfortunately, guys, it's already too late in the afternoon. The sun is gonna be over here somewhere behind those trees and it's cloudy, so we're only making like half an amp per set of solar panels. Half an amp for these four and half an amp for those four. But don't fear, I will give you an update on how well these guys are producing power in a future video. If you wanna know more about what's going on here on our homestead, there's a video right over there that you'd probably like to check out. Otherwise, I hope you have a really great day. Keep smiling and I'll see you over in that video in just a second. <laughs>